All right, welcome back to the 3D Workshop. This is the first video in a series of videos about how to design for 3D printing. All right guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to remix a part from Thingiverse. Say you've found a part, the application is what you need, but its functionality isn't quite gonna work because of some small design feature. We're gonna talk about how to take a part from Thingiverse convert it into a workable CAD file in Fusion 360 and make the changes so that you can print it off and get it working for you. So here we are in Fusion 360, but before I go any further, I just wanna say that this is not going to be a comprehensive tutorial on how to use this program. This is just going to be a quick look at how to bring an SDL into Fusion and change it into a workable CAD file so that we can make design changes. So the first thing we need to do is download our files from Thingiverse. I've already done this. I've extracted them to the desktop and now I should be ready to open them in Fusion, right? Well, if I go up and click new design from file, I don't see them because I don't have the option for an STL. The workaround for this is to come up to your document settings, right click and turn do not capture design history on. We're gonna press continue. And now I can come up to insert, press insert mesh and there's my file. So now it's in the program and everything looks pretty good, but you'll notice that it's considering it one mesh body. So if we look here, it's a mesh body file type, which um, unfortunately doesn't allow us to make any changes to the features of it. So what we need to do now is we're gonna right click the file and press mesh to B rep. We're gonna leave these settings alone. We want a new body and we're gonna press okay. So now I've got a workable CAD file. I can actually go back and delete the mesh body and this would probably be a good point to save, but looking at this, you can tell that something is weird. We've got all kinds of faces that we don't need. Well, that's just one of the nuances of an STL file. When you convert a standard 3D modeling CAD file into an STL, it takes the geometry and turns it into triangles and rectangles. So when you convert it back to a CAD file, you end up with a number of faces that you don't need. So what we do is we just come in, click the extra faces. As you can see, there's two faces on each surface and we're just gonna delete all of the faces that we don't need. Um, being careful not to delete the ones that we do need. And as you can see, when I move around this, it'll delete a number of faces in one operation sometimes. So just be careful as you're going around. Um, luckily, we're early on in the process. So if you do mess up, it's not a big deal to go back and fix it. Um, anyway, I'm gonna move around and delete these faces real quick, and then I'll jump back with you on the other side. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. We have our faces, our extra faces deleted. And it looks like if you see this, comparing this side to that side, I may have deleted one face too many, but that'll be okay. Uh, so next we're gonna talk about how to convert this into a clean CAD file. I would call this a dirty CAD file. Um, and this isn't something that we necessarily wanna work with. So we're gonna convert this into a clean CAD file and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is put a sketch on the edge of our part. We're gonna use the include 3D geometry function because it's a very easy way to just copy the lines from that existing part onto our new sketch. So I'm just going around, I'm capturing the straight lines because I know that the curved lines are bad. I'm then gonna come in and use a center diameter circle to make those new arcs. And all I'm doing is putting it somewhere in the middle and using a couple of coincident and a tangent relationship to line it up with that existing geometry and then trimming away the excess. We're gonna do it again for the outside using the same relationships. And once again, we're coming in with the trim function and getting rid of these lines that we don't need. Take note that some of them are very small and hard to see. So you just gotta look carefully and zoom in when you're doing this. The next step is to mirror this across to the other side. Uh, and we're basically just going to copy the, the two arcs that we just made over and then come in and delete the points that we don't need. And at this stage, we're pretty much ready to make a new part. All right, so at this point we have good sketch geometry. 
Now all we have to do is control click all of our lines and copy them over into a new part. Don't try and highlight, you'll grab the old stuff. I've already copied this, so I'm gonna paste it over here, click OK, and now we're good to start making alterations. The one thing to check is to look for gaps in your geometry. You can see when I go to extrude this, something's wrong. It's not going to extrude or allow me to extrude just that outer edge geometry. So let's take a look at why that is. What's going on is there's a gap in a joint somewhere. The easiest way to find it is to come up to extend and just use there. See this function highlights very small gaps and this looks like a gap but as you can see it's not. But right here that little tiny dot is a gap in our geometry. So if we come down here I know the other one's right there. We'll stop our sketch and now it's registering it as a closed loop. So now we can come up here and we can extend out just that geometry that we wanted. But let's talk about uh, making alterations because ultimately that's what the point of this tutorial is. So let's say I wanted for whatever reason to add some type of rounded boss to the top of this. I could do something like that. Come in and extrude this out now and I've got my new part. Now from here, let's say I needed a hole in the bottom. I'll just make a sketch, go to my circle, and find our midpoint, put our hole, and cut it out. So there you go, guys. That's how you can bring in an STL, get good geometry out of it, and create a new clean CAD file with it. At this point, I can just go up to make, uncheck our send a 3D print utility and press OK. And this is going to give me an STL file that I can then open up in Cura or whatever slicer I'm using. And there you go, there you have it. That is uh, our part in Cura, ready to slice and remixed from its original version. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been How to Remix a Part from Thingiverse, the first video in a series of videos about designing for 3D printing. We owe this series to one of our subscribers who left us a comment on the CR10 video. And as you know, we have a Raspberry Pi to give away. So Jared Smith, you are the winner of that Raspberry Pi. Thank you so much for your input and the great ideas for content on this channel. Um, if you like this video, you guys know what to do. I'm JP, this is the 3D Workshop. Jared, I'm gonna get in contact with you. Until next time, see ya.